Hello, welcome to the next lesson of the iOS to MySQL series. In this video, we are going to create the user interface. We're going to create the table view and the map view, and then we're going to display the data in those two views. Now, in the previous lesson, just to do a quick recap, we had downloaded the data that our web service provided by implementing the home model, and then we had implemented the delegation, the protocol and delegation pattern to return that data to the view controller. Now from the view controller, we're going to be able to display that data onto the screen. First of all, however, we need to add a table view to this view controller so that it can display that data onto that table view. Let's go over to the main.storyboard and we're simply going to down here search for table view. Let's move that here, drag that into here. Um, and basically, while it's highlighted, we're going to tap this icon here to add some constraints. Let's add all four, enabling them. Change them all to zero. And uh, it's going to put them according to the top layout guide and the bottom layout guide, but that's fine. Uh, because there's going to be, um, you know, the status bar up here. So that's going to make sure that it doesn't, you can see here the table view ends right here. It doesn't block that status bar. Now we're going to have to connect this table view um, as an IBL let property so that we can access it through the code. Let's go ahead, open up assistant editor, hold down control, click and drag this guy over here where we have the other property. And the connection type is outlet. I'm going to call this just the table view like that. I'm going to connect it, and then we're going to have a table view here. The next step, now that we've connected the table view, is to display the data in that table view. Let's go back to the view controller. And in order to display data in the table view, we have to say that the view controller conforms to the UI table view, uh, UI table view data source, and the UI table view delegate. Those are the two protocols, just like how we created this home model delegate one. Uh, inside here, the view did load function, we need to set self as the table views data source and delegate. So table view dot delegate equals self and table view dot data source oops this is a lowercase v we change that to an uppercase because that's what we called this outlet there equals self okay and just like how we set ourselves as the delegate for the home model and so when the home model calls uh, the delegate function it calls back to here and um, the table view does the same thing because we set this view controller as the delegate and the data source for the table view. The table view is going to ask us for uh, data to power the table view, as well as when the user interacts with the table view to call uh, functions that we have in here. Let's create a special section here. We're going to use this special notation. And by using this special notation, it's going to create a new kind of divider here in this list of functions. So the ones we need to implement are table view. Um, we're going to need did select row, but let's not add that first. We need number of rows. And in here, we're going to return. Uh, we haven't we haven't declared a property to hold our data. So let's say locations. Up here, I'm declaring a new property, and I'm just going to assign this as an optional location array. All right, so here we're going to say return locations dot count. Now, this this might not work because if locations is nil. We're not going to be able to get a count from it, and it's not it's expecting a an actual number. Right? So we can do something like this where we say 
we can say you know if let locations not equal nil then return locations count but if it is nil then return zero so we can do something like that just to test if it's empty first or nil you know before doing this code however um, this wouldn't be if let it would just be if locations not equal nil however instead of doing this uh, I'm just going to assign an empty array to it instead of making it an optional so right when this class or this object gets initialized this property is going to be set to a location array that has zero elements so this way I can simply say return locations dot count so if there's nothing in it then it's gonna return zero okay next one we have to implement is table view Oops, table view cell actually let's just type cell for row at and in this delegate function the table view asks us uh, for the cell the table view cell for a specific index path and that's just a row and a section if you have multiple sections but we only have one section so it's just going to be the row so here we're going to first we need to get a table view cell and then we need to assign some data into the label of that cell and then return that cell for display so let's go back to our storyboard here in this table view um, in the right hand side here we're going to say prototype cells there's one of them and then we're going to click that table view cell you can click it here from the document outline and there's going to be an identifier here that we can specify let's just call it basic cell with capital B and capital C because here in the view controller we're going to be able to get a basic cell by saying let cell equals uh, table view dot DQ reusable table cell and I'm going to use this one where we pass in the identifier basic cell for index path and this is going to be the index path uh, passed into this parameter so the string or the identifier of the cell we want to fetch is basic cell and the index path is simply the parameter that gets passed in here so now we can say cell dot um, the prototype cell comes with a basic label and so I can access that property here text label dot text equals and we are going to set that text to locations um, this is the locations array so we're going to access the index path dot row in order to determine which location to pick up and then we're going to choose a property so let's choose name and then lastly we're going to return the cell so let's run this and we should be able to see our locations in the table view okay there was one missing <laughs> there was one missing thing here so we we do see a table view here but we don't see any data and that's because after the items have come back from the home model we actually need to reload the table view to tell it to grab data again um, before we do that the table view is looking at this property for its list of locations to display right so we have to set uh, self dot locations equals the locations that uh, got passed back from the home model like that and I'm using self here just to specify that this is referring to the property up here because otherwise it would be locations equal locations and that is a little bit confusing for everyone including Xcode so it doesn't understand what we're trying to do but if we use self dot locations we're able to distinguish that we're referring to this property here of the of the view controller okay so self dot locations equals the locations that are passed in and then we we don't need self here because there's only one table view dot reload data so that's going to cause the table view again to uh, trigger these two delegate functions see that 
The reason why it was empty before was because when the view controller initially loaded, that's when the table view asked for data to display. And at that point, this locations array was empty, so it didn't display any data. However, after the home model returned all of the location data, we, we never told the table view to refresh, essentially. Okay, so now you can see the data here, our two locations. When you tap on them, nothing happens because we haven't implemented that uh, delegate function yet. Let's go ahead and add it. Uh, table view did select row. Make sure you don't accidentally select did deselect row or else you'll get some weird behavior. So use this one did select row at and when the user selects uh, location, it's going to come into here. So at this point, I'm going to save the Xcode project and in the next uh, lesson, we're going to implement the map view. So when the user is going to tap on a location in the table view, we're going to bring them over to the next view and display it on a pin. So thanks for watching. You can download the source code in the description and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.